motion passes, so the nominations are closed. So we're going to now proceed with the nominating speeches in the order that the candidates were nominated. I think we'd like to, uh, where do you prefer? Do you want them to come up here and do that or do it down at the mic here? Okay, so come forward. So what we need is the uh, nominating speech and one or two seconding speeches for candidate Barry Peterson, if you could make your way up here. And then as soon as those three are done, if uh, Gay and Demordot's nominating and seconding speeches could be prepared. And then after that, we'll hear from Barry and we'll hear from Gay Ann. So three minutes nominating speech, one minute brief seconding speech, two minutes candidate speech. Thank you. I'd like to place the name of uh, Barry Peterson into nomination for the chairman of the Idaho Republican Party. Barry will truly be a chairman from the grassroots. He's worked his way up. He's been a precinct committeeman, county chairman, region three chairman. He's also been in politics at the local level, county commissioner. And I, I believe that Barry is the man to execute the victory plan for this fall. As you heard last night, some of our elected officials pointed out the war that is being waged on our state by federal agencies. So we need a strong party, strong elected officials that will push back against this federal government that is planning to stop all grazing all logging, mining, even recreating on the national forests, closing roads. And I believe that uh, Barry has the work ethic, the time commitment, and also the energy to keep this party energized like Norm has done, keep the pedal to the metal, take over as many seats as we can in those Springs districts, Ada County, Blaine County, wherever the lack of a democratic stronghold. Yeah, any county where we have Democrats, we need to go out to those seats. <laughs> it's a pretty good ratio right now, but kind of get tired of listening to the ones in there whining. So anyway, I think Barry has the background. His family's been around Mountain Home, some of the first people into that area. He has the pioneer background, and he has the character to serve Idaho well. So I urge you to support Barry Peterson, Chairman of the Idaho Republican Party. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Steve Warkin, delegate from Twin Falls County. I'd like to second the nomination for Barry Peterson. I've known Barry for a number of years and have listened carefully to his perspectives as a representative of rural Idaho, I think he brings the judgment, the fundraising ability, and the perspective necessary uh, to lead our party uh, not only to victory uh, this coming fall, but beyond. I'd like to call your attention to this uh, brochure. If you've not looked at this, I'd like to just highlight two items on here. One is on the inside page, the list of his accomplishments at the local and grassroots level. This is an individual who understands the party from the ground up. And then on the back page, I'd like to particularly call your attention to the first item. This is a man whose personal faith and whose personal uh, importance of, kind of looks at the world through the eyes of his personal faith. That's the kind of individual that I want to see leading our party, and I think he'd make us a great party chairman. Thank you very much. taught me that very lesson one time when I was refereeing basketball and I'm 
tell you the story, but I never ever called any more technicals after that because he said this, contention breeds contention. And this man is very, very good at getting things done that need to be done and getting people to help him do it. I recommend Barry Peterson. Thank you. My voice nearly escapes me. Indeed, I feel it an honor to stand before you being recommended to this assignment. It's gratifying to me to see so many of you engaged in the state Republican Party. As I contemplated this opportunity, I couldn't help but reflect on the Eiffel Tower. There isn't a lot of good for America that comes out of France. A country that we sacrificed our lives for. But they have done some things that are a blessing to this nation. I couldn't help but think of the marvel of the Eiffel Tower. When you look at that darn thing, the base just seems to be as big as all the world. And it stretches high up into the skies. In my mind, that's the way I picture our Central Committee for the State of Idaho and the Republican Party. I have strong feelings that the greatest strength for our party comes from the precinct committee. And as we serve in those posts, if we feel like we have an effect, then we're anxious to put our shoulder to the wheel. And we will unitedly work to have a more effective and impactful role in the politics of our state. I've been blessed with a wonderful family. I cherish them deeply. They're my first obligation and responsibility. Relative to this assignment, if I'm lucky enough to achieve this responsibility, I see the most important role in our Central Committee for the State, that of the Executive Director. They are day to day. They are every day. They are the, he's the individual that contacts you on a regular basis and keeps you informed. So if I have this responsibility, I will immediately seek assistance from you. If you have a recommendation, we want to know it on the executive board so that we get the very best we can to fill the very big shoes left by Jonathan Parker. Thank you very much. Peterson. So now we'll have the uh, nominating speech and seconding speeches for Gayanne de Mordoff, followed by Gayanne herself. So three minutes for the nominating speech, one minute each for the seconding speeches, and two minutes or so for the candidate. Thanks. Good afternoon. It is my uh, pleasure and honor to stand before you and I nominate Gann de Mordaunt to be our next party chair. Let me tell you a little bit about Gann's background. Gann has been involved in conservative Republican politics from the time that she was a college student and she served as the chairman of the Young uh, Republicans at BYU. Since 2001, she has been a precinct committee person. Uh, she's a legislative district chair in uh, legislative district 14 since 2005. Uh, she was also the Legislative District Chairman of the Year for the State of Idaho in 2006. Uh, she's worked hard as a grassroots uh, worker for a number of critical campaigns in Idaho. She helped elect Raul Labrador, the next uh, congressman from the District 1, when most people at that time did not think Raul had a chance of beating a popular incumbent. Uh, she's worked for Governor Otter's campaign. She was one of the early supporters of my campaign uh, over 10 years ago. Uh, not only has Gann been involved for all of her adult life in Republican politics and making them successful in Idaho, probably the most impressive thing about Gann is she's a mother of four and she's raised wonderful children. Gann is one of those ladies that some people think has never worked a day in her life. <laughs> 
Uh, but we know better. And you will be impressed with her credentials, her ability to articulate our message and to represent us. It's my honor to nominate her. She is an education reform leader. She helped start one of the first charter schools in Idaho. And today that, that charter school is one of the most successful, largest charter schools in the state. Uh, we would do well to have Gay Ann as, a, as our party chair. It's been over 40 years since the woman has been our party chair. And I think all of us men know who's been doing the work for the last 40 years. We might as well elect a woman to be our party chair. Join me in electing Gay Ann DeMordaunt as our next party chair. Thank you. Watkins, I'm a delegate from Bonneville County, and I want to second uh, Tom's uh, endorsement and recommendation for Gay Ann. Uh, not because Barry is a, is a bad guy. I've known Barry now for two years, and I can say that his uh, demeanor and genteel nature is one of the finest around, and I would support either one of these individuals. My experience with Gay Ann goes far beyond the two years that I've known, um, known Barry. And I want to just tell you that one of the things that impresses me about Gay Ann is her ability to follow through commitments. She made a commitment early on to support my candidate, Governor Romney, our nominee. And uh, years ago, she was involved in helping raise money. She was involved in organizing her group. She currently serves on the State Finance Committee for Governor Romney. And my observation is that what Gay Ann puts her mind to, Gay Ann follows through on in a very, very wonderful fashion. And so I just wanted to speak to that. Uh, I think she would do a phenomenal job and I would second uh, Tom's endorsement of Gay Ann. Bravo. Good afternoon. I stand here to second the nomination of Gay Ann Demordant. And I stand here as a delegate from District 14. What a lot of people forget is that I was a, a precinct committee man a long time ago. I was a district chair. I worked a lot in the party. I haven't been an elected official all of my life. And during that whole time that I've been working in the party, I've had a partner in Gay Ann Demordant in my district. She was a uh, precinct committee man with me. She, when I became the district chair, she assisted me as a district chair of my party. And when I became a state legislator, she became the district chair of my party. I can tell you a lot of things about Ann, but I just want to tell you two or three things. Number one, in Ada County, when people were voting for closed primaries, and I know we have some distinctions about this, she was the only person in Ada County who stood for closed primaries, when every one of her friends was actually against it. I think that tells you the backbone of this woman. The second thing that I know, and it's a little bit more personal, when most of her friends were actually supporting somebody else in my race, she stood by me, she was there, and she helped me get elected. So please stand with me and support Gay Ann Good afternoon, everyone. I feel like it's my birthday or something. That's terribly humbling to have uh, so many good things said about you. You know, I look around this room and over the course of the last few weeks, I have had the opportunity to talk with so many of you and I have loved hearing the stories, the feedback, maybe some of the challenges that, that our party is having around the state. It's been so great, though, to see the individualism that is, that is in Idaho Republicans. I think it's like no other Republicans. We're so individual. We like to march to the beat of our own drum. But at the end of the day, that individualism is strength. And when we bring those strengths together, we can do great things. And those great things are implementing and forwarding the, the idealisms, the fundamentals, the platform of the Republican Party. You know, we've got a lot of serious problems nationally. We know we must change the occupant of the White House. We have challenges, and we have challenges here at home. 
We've got an economy that, that you know, is, is strangleholding our pocketbooks. We have challenges in terms of family values. We have challenges on every front. And we need Republican ideals to start to end those problems. That is the answer. Now, we can talk about ideology and, and you know, all the things that we come here to talk about. But at the end of the day, we've got to deliver at the ballot box. It is about what happens on November 6th. And that is where our focus needs to be. We need to get our good men and women of the Republican Party elected. We need to pass the referendum. You know, if we miss this opportunity for education reform, we're not going to have a chance, folks, for a long time. We cannot have the NEA, the largest, most well-funded, most influential uh, union in the nation, telling Idahoans what we should do. We need to send the message that Idaho is not for sale. If, if education is not your issue, then the economy ought to be your issue. Because education reform is about getting students that are work ready and college ready. And we don't have jobs or businesses coming into Idaho if we don't have work ready and college ready students. We have to enact these reforms that our legislators and our and our governor and our state superintendent have been so brave in leading the way. It's our turn now to lead the way. We've got to make sure that these pass at the ballot box on November 6th. So please join me in a concentration.